Mah Muhammad has to leave. Do you have a... a I have another appointment. I got to go do another show. What? What? What other show? Well, the David Frost show. Give me that check back. <laughs> All right. I'll see you. He's waiting. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. You hear that? There's something in New York called the community... Yeah, I guess they're, they're gesturing. There's something in New York called the Community Sex Information and Education Service. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to trying to help people with their problems with sex. And uh, it's a unique thing that there's a switchboard manned by trained volunteers, and they can help you with a problem if you have one. I don't know if other cities have this yet or not, but my next guest is the young woman who got this started. Will you welcome, please, Ann Wellborn. How are you? Is it, let me ask you quickly, in your job, is there a problem getting to talk about what you have to talk about? Uh, do you have to face that problem? Do you talk to people you about their most hard, intimate problems? I mean, is it hard to talk about Hard sex? to talk about it, uh, hard to talk about What's your uh, question, Dick? <laughs> well, now, it's late in, at people night and we have a- People that call us very often, that that all, very, people that call us very often have the same problem that you have in that it's very <laughs> hard to talk about sex. Oh, I see. I have no problem talking about S-E-X. <laughs> But uh, they do have that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many calls do you get a night? How, how, are you, how big is your organization? Well, about 150 people a day have been calling us since last June. So we've talked to over 20,000 people in New York. How'd they then. find out about this? I well, never heard of it. About the, sex? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, the media's been fantastic. We started out with a very small ad in the classified ad section of a local paper. Yeah. And since then, international news has, has been talking oh, about it. Oh, yeah, I had heard about it since, but I mean, w w you had been around much longer than I'd yeah, ever heard about it. How did they first hear about it? How did the first people who called know about well, it before you started it, getting Well, the first person that heard about it was the telephone man that installed our phones. And he started telling the, the people at the telephone company about it, and they started calling us. And it's amazing, with an anonymous telephone situation, people will, will call with problems that they've just never been able to talk to anyone about before. Somehow over the phone they can talk about Yeah, it's anonymous couldn't. and it's confidential and mm -hmm. most of us just don't talk about sex. And I think it's unfortunate that it has to be an anonymous telephone. So you're really performing a service. Do you, do you get obscene calls or people who are just calling to waste your time? Well, we get, I don't know what you mean by obscene, first of all, but we do get some well, people... Example, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, for example, well... We do get the majority of the people that call us very serious and really want information. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have a few people that as far as I'm concerned, have problems that are maybe even more involved that aren't able to really ask a direct question. We get some, but a very small number. Do you ever know if you've helped them or not? Yeah. <laughs> how do you find that out? We do, but... Uh, do they put you on they, hold? or no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. No, they call us back, but ideally someday we'll know when we've really helped it, when the VD rate goes down and the uh, birth yeah. control use goes up and unwanted pregnancies go down and unhappy marriages that split up or still continue to exist disappear. Yeah. That's what we're working toward. Yeah. I, I guess all I was thinking was, do you actually get callbacks from people who say thank oh, yeah. you or you help me in a way that no one else was able to? Quite or frequently. Do you get people who can't tell their analysts things that they can tell you? I oh, wonder yes, that'd be Oh, yes, we have analysts that have their patients call us. See, we're all in this together, analysts, teachers, doctors, ministers. We've all learned about sex in the same way, and that's indirectly, really not in an open, honest, comfortable kind of way. So we all have to kind of relearn all of this and, and look at sex as something that, that's part of being human and a really happy part of it. So if I call up, will you tell me where to get it? <laughs> The answer to that will be uh, forthcoming after this message. <laughs> we're back, and uh, we're talking with Ann Wellborn. Uh, no, it doesn't bother me. I don't mind. Uh, what, maybe we could do some service here now. What do most people call with? What problems? I think the biggest thing that people call about is um, just not being able to talk about sex, not feeling comfortable about it, and then related to that, a lovemaking kind of a situation. Um, married people that have been married for a while who feel like sex is boring and it's not interesting anymore. 
Uh, and then when you talk to them, it's easy to see why, why it isn't interesting. And they've never really talked to each other about what they like or don't like. Sometimes they don't even know what they like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and, uh... <laughs> I'm laughing because I know what I like. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, folks, do, do you... Uh, what is it, Woody? Well, <laughs> Cloris, please, have some control. No, we're not supposed to be afraid to talk about it. And here, look at Oh, that's you. right. Don't let me put any restrictions on you. That's right. Here I, here I go, playing the part. Right. I saw the question. No, it's uh, all right to laugh about sex, but unfortunately, a lot of people really can't. You know, they really can't laugh at themselves and, and, and be relaxed about it. It's the it's giggling funny. about sex that we have to get into. Mm -hmm. Laughing is all right. Is that right? Well, the giggling would um, mean that you're a little nervous, wouldn't you? Would you think? Well, what do you think? <laughs> giggling and stammering, giggling. yes. <laughs> but, um, I think we should define the word first of oh. all. What is uh, sex actually? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I didn't know we were going to have to start from the beginning there. <laughs> For, for our slower students, what is that? <laughs> what is this sex you've been talking about? Oh, I think I'll answer that one, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, go ahead, because I, I would lead her in yeah, a very bad direction. I think it's, I think it's I something what... different for everyone. Yeah. Something different for everyone. Right. That, that may be the, the heart of the problem. Right. Uh, what are the qualifications of the people that you have answering, the, the people who pick up the phone? Well, they're, pe they're people. And there are people yeah. that... But so are the ones that call. we can find That's it right. to people. That's right. And I think... No, I think... I think I think the beautiful thing about what we're doing is that it's people that know information and that are comfortable talking about sex, talking to other people about it, and saying, hey, it's okay, you know? I mean, and uh, let me tell you about it. Let's talk about it. And what, what kinds of problems are you having? Or what, what is it that you don't know? Yeah, but I wondered if you, if you have people who are making an effort to have people who have degrees in psychiatry, it doesn't anything, matter. Um, the, people that, the people that work with us, there's some 60 of them here in New York and about 40 in Boston, all go through a very intensive training program that is kind of ruled and regulated by psychiatrists and doctors and specialists in the field. But when it gets right down to it, most professionals haven't had any training in sexuality themselves. And yeah. uh, we're kind of all in this together. And it's very interesting because we're supported strictly by contributions. And when we go to foundations, a minute they fear the name of the organization. They too will become uncomfortable and and uh, find it difficult to to give us money to support what we're doing, even though they endorse it. Yeah. It's the old talking about it problem again. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find people still suffer from the old myths even today? There's a girl on my staff whose grandmother felt that if you were kissed, you would become pregnant. Oh yeah. And she grew up to adulthood thinking that. Uh, the, the idea that, that kissing excited the reproductive mechanisms in the body and yeah. that you could literally become pregnant from it. This, and, is, uh, this is one of the reasons that we got involved with this is because people's misinformation or lack of information or myths about sex really cause them fantastic discomfort and, and difficulties. Young kids who think if they masturbate they're not going to be able to have sex later I on or I get married. No, that's perfectly all right. No. No, no, I want to get in on some of this here. I'm going to hold hands uh, with Woody, meanwhile. I heard, heard that excessive masturbation led to uh, hosting a talk show. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true or Was not. Was this before or after you had hosted a talk show? <laughs> Listen, so long as you're healthy. <laughs> I figured out how my grandmother had six children once I figured it out. Tell now, us, tell us. I'm going to, with apologies to my grandmother. You ready? I hope so. All right, watch. <laughs> That's all, just because in those now, I'm days, sure that Cloris has something very serious to say here, <laughs> and that uh, this is not just a frivolous uh, well, remark. Well, I think in those days it was to have, you should have a large family and children, but on the other hand, uh, wives aren't really supposed to be too sexual. Sure, in that age, a woman was supposed to endure it. Endure, but yes. Not, uh, I don't know why you're talking about that age. Is that continues to exist today? Do you find that now? Today. It does continue. I yeah. think that's so. Right. Most of the people that call us are men who have always been concerned with sex and with performance. But the women, mm -hmm. when women call us, it's about birth control or pregnancy or 
abortion or venereal disease or something like that. And I think it's interesting that women still, I think many of them, don't feel they have a right to enjoy sex or to really ask for anything. But you say very few of them call? Oh, no, they call, but the oh. wide majority of the people that call us are men. Do you yeah. refer them to other people or books, or, or do you just talk directly about the immediate? Well, a lot of the people that call us really don't want to go and talk to anybody. They're just too embarrassed to go and sit down and confess or discuss But there are wonderful the books on the subject. Right. I've read many of them in my spare time. I found them helpful. <laughs> no, we recommend books. In case you're I, busy on the right. line sometimes. <laughs> no, we recommend books, and it's amazing a lot of people haven't really read that much. And we hope eventually that we'll have a place that people can come to and talk to other people and buy books and see films and talk to someone in a one-to-one -one situation. It is an interesting question, though, if you get anything so complex. that you, Do you get anybody with such a problem that you just... Well, we're not trying to cure Recommend dial a prayer or something? No, or? we're not trying to... <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Just where, yeah, where it just seems the, hopeless? No, many of the people that call us need more than information and support. They really mm -hmm. need to see someone and work on it, and then we tell them how they can get that kind of help. You ever get a call from a guy who's locked in a position, can't get out of it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a myth. <laughs> yeah. that seems like That's a, a myth. That's problem. a myth. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't listening. What did you say? <laughs> Is there a motto for your organization? Uh, I knew you were going to ask. I ask me. hesitatingly before somebody else answers it quickly. Yeah, we do have a motto. You do have. Right, right. Sexual ignorance is not bliss. Is not bliss. Right. Who thought of that one? <laughs> it's not bad. We kind of all did together. Yeah. But uh, can you say yet, uh, from what you say, I gather that men seem to have more problems than women, or that men are the callers well, more frequently? Well, I, I wouldn't maybe, say yeah. that men do, but I, the, this is this is what we're confronted with. But then it would... the women's lib has helped open up the whole. Uh, can well, of I think what it is is that men have always felt a pressure to be sexual, you know, and to be performers. I'm sorry, I'm not cutting you off, but there are me. We have a message. We have to. We'll be right back. <laughs>